Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, Ross Automotive. Got a 2011 Chevrolet Impala here in the shop and uh, the customers got a couple of complaints. One of them is the, uh, uh, he's got some erratic lights and unfortunately I was unable to replicate the problem. Uh, the other one and I really didn't even want to make a video on it because it's it's so redundant to do so. Uh, we have a problem with a clicking noise, which is really common on these automobiles. Uh, and get in here and turn that key on. Oop! I didn't mean to start it up. So, hear the clicking, and we're not going to get into a big old diagnostic routine and all that good stuff. Uh, let me turn the slide here on and flip that camera around. Basically, you hear that sound, guys. Had to turn that camera around. But basically, just lower your glove compartment down. Look at the glove compartment here. Just lower it down. And over here in the back, right there, you see a blend motor actuator or whatever. And if you put your finger up against it, That one is definitely the one that's clicking. There's not really any need to do a lot of diagnostics on these. Uh, they have issues, severe issues with those. I know because I've replaced several of them. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's that's been going on through the years. Don't know how far back. Don't remember. Doesn't matter. But it's just two bolts. Yank that Dewey out. Put you another one in it. You know, I hate to even make make a video like that about changing something like that but without checking but there's really not a whole lot of checking you can do just replace it and 99.7 percent of the time that's what it's going to be so so the socket that you want to use is 730 seconds there's your two nuts right there And uh, sorry for the shaking. Here's the actuator. That was the one that was raising hell. I highly recommend to get the GM replacement part. I've had it ordered. They say it's on back order, so I know. Really not something I like to put in. But I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. It's got a lifetime warranty anyway. We are using the Dorman part on it. And the reason I don't, don't mind putting it in here, it literally takes no time to put, uh, put one, take one out, put one in. You know, it literally takes no time. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead, since I can't film taking it out anyway, you know, there's no way to get the camera up in there and, and show the rest of it because that's a tight space. But anyway, uh, we're going to put the doorman in. And what you want to do, let me get that light in there a little bit better for you. So bear with me, folks, just a second here. I try to get the light in there without turning it off. Okay, I cannot seem to get the light in there. Cannot seem to get the light in there. Okay, so back here in the back. I'm going to flip you around. Get you in there. Okay, right there, that piece of plastic. You're going to want to make sure that it is nice and free. So stick your hand back there. I can't film that doing it. But it needs to turn nice and free kind of wiggle it and you kind of 
hear it. So that's me, that's me moving it by hands. You know, that's your blend door. You're going to want to make sure that you do home. You don't have obstructions in there. You know, turn that. It's got to turn easy by hand. It's going to have a little bit of resistance, of course, but it cannot be like really hard to turn. If that's the case, you're going to burn up another motor. So in this case here, it's not hard to turn. It's fairly easy to turn. Uh, I'm going to give it a, a little bit of a shot of lube back there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this unit back in. So as far as the um, lube I'm using, this is what I'm going to use. It's a, a dry lubricant that doesn't stain and smell and it doesn't pick up no uh, dust. There's a lot of times underneath here you pick up dust. Kind of a debate whether or not to use a dry lubricant on something like that, but I always have, and any kind of lubrication to me better than none. Okay, so key has been off. Turn the old key back on. Move our actuator from hot to cold. And there is nothing. At least no noises, that is. Well, that was a quick drain on the battery, so... <laughs> Sorry about that guys <laughs> And there is nothing <laughs> I second that statement <laughs> Okay, <laughs> put the charger or something on that Anyway in conclusion Trying not to The motor is I don't know that the camera would ever pick that up but the motor is actually working if you listen close or if I listen close I can hear it underneath the dash here but anyway guys that's a it, it's a fix uh, I know there's not a lot of testing on this uh, I will however go ahead and dissect the uh, old one and we'll see if we can find anything on it okay so I'm going to investigate to see if we can see what has failed I'll try to do this without breaking it. Well, that attempt at not breaking it failed. I'll just break all of them. Okay guys, I'm going to try to get you a close-up. As you can see, we've got the main motor. And we'll have a look at the, uh, the gears. This one here is actually in good condition. And from my experience, that one normally never fails, nor does the main gear or the bull gear, what I'm going to call a bull gear anyway. It don't never fails, but here is the reason why we had the noises. So, got flattened teeth, teeth are missing. There you go, guys. No diagnostic necessary. Now I'm 
Not saying don't check things, always check things. But sometimes, you know, the, the time it takes to repair something along with the cost of the part outweighs uh, a diagnostic fee when you already uh, know what's wrong with it, basically. So, guys, there you have it. I'm going to end the video right there. Nothing, nothing left to be said. Thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever. There you go. Thanks for watching.